Manipur is burning. There is a riots happening in Manipur. On this basis, we can expect some questions on Manipur. In this video, we are going to discuss about entirely history, geography, polity and location of Manipur. Let us start. So this is a map of Manipur and the northeast you can see. Manipur is surrounded by two states. One is Nagaland in the northern side and Mizoram in the southern side. In the western side you got Assam. It also has an international border with Myanmar. So international border with Myanmar very crucial. Okay, We all have a border with Nagaland, Assam and Mizoram. The word Manipur stands for two terms. One is Mani which means jewel and Pur which means land. So Manipur is translated into jewel land. If you look at the geography of Manipur, the Manipur is basically divided into hilly area and the valley area. It will be like hills in the Manipur like this. Okay. Surrounded by the hills in the center, you have a valley or a plain. This is what the topography of Manipur. The central part of the state is a valley which is a plain and surrounded by the hills. 90% of the geography of Manipur is a hilly region. That's why I said there will be hills in all the sides, all the sides. In the center, you got a valley which is just 10%. Now, this is what the center of the controversy and the riots which is happening in the Manipur. If you look at the history of Manipur, it was basically a princely state. Okay, It was neighboring with Myanmar. So, the a king from Manipur used to attack Myanmar or Burma. From Burma, a lot of attacks come to Manipur. Like this, there was a boundary disputes. But in 1924, Manipur entered a subsidiary alliance with the British Empire. You know what is subsidiary alliance? Under this alliance, the British will station their army in your kingdom. And you have to pay for the army. And they will take care of your internal as well as the external disputes and riots or any kind of threat okay but manipur wanted to have a separate kingdom always had a problem with manipur also sorry always have a problem with um, british also and they had a problem with myanmar also okay but during the second world war and during our freedom movement the japanese forces entered the manipur and thereby it was a uh, where the actual azad hind force entered india you know it was led by uh, subhash chandra bose and it was at this place we had a fighting with the British forces and the, because of the retreatment of Japan, that means if you say Nahasaki and uh, uh, this one atomic bomb in Japan, which cre created a defeat of Japan, thereby Azad Hind was also defeated and all this Azad Hind force soldiers have to surrender. So thereby Britishers are winning that war. Okay. If you look at the modern day in 1956, it was placed as a union territory and becomes a full-fledged state in 1972 as per the Northeast Areas Reorganization Act of 1971. If you look at the princely states, okay, there was a king called Pamiba, okay, and they controlled the entire Manipur. Okay, they had a considerable power. Okay. So, in the years of 1925, 1935, 1938, all these years are not important. You can leave it. Okay. So, Manipur was under his power. Okay. And they had devastated many parts of Burma. They used to go and for a war and they used to take up the spoils from Burma. Okay. And also the Burmese also, lot of Burmese kingdoms are coming and attacking. Uh, Manipur also happening occasionally. Okay. This battle is possible question. Okay. The battle was fought at a place called... Konjom, okay, Kongjom, okay, it, it was in uh, 23rd April 1981. At this place, okay, Major Pauna, okay, were defeated eventually by the British forces. That means if you look at, there is an, another current of ice based history, Lachit Boparkan, that is in Assam, in Brahmaputra River. Similarly, in Manipur also, we had one such occasion. The British was defeating the Manipur forces, but still he was termed as a brave and courageous person. In fact, we are celebrating uh, Khojam Day on 23rd April of every year. Okay, And it is declared as a state holiday. The Kangla port, even now, it is a, it is actually is under tentatively under the UNESCO's list 
for uh, world heritage site so kangla port was the uh, power center of manipur kingdom now uh, it is a important uh, tourist place after this battle of kanjum okay we could see the british uh, captured kangla uh, port okay subsequently yuvraj uh, tenkindrajit okay along with general tangal were executed you know hanging them okay in public place on 13th august 9, 1891 okay this day is remembered as an and observed as a patriot day uh, since 1891 it is being celebrated so two days to be important in manipur one is the 23rd april which is celebrated as a kanjum day the other one is 13th august which is celebrated as a patriotic day at the time of independence manipur was a separate kingdom okay on 11th august 1947 they are signing instrument of accession okay thereby maharaja buddha chandra signed the agreement and joining the india in 1949 there's a merger agreement under this agreement the merging of uh, manipur kingdom with the, and becoming a part c state this can be a question see we had in, initially at the time of independence the india was divided into part uh, a state uh, b state and c state c, c and d and all okay that was later removed as uh, union territories okay so part st- c manipur was under a part c of the Uh, indian uh, territory if you look at the geography of the manipur uh, geography ha- the basically river you have four major rivers one is known as barak river basin it is the largest river of manipur we also have a manipur river that means a river named as manipur that is also there which is in the central part of manipur we have who river basin who why you uh, okay it is in the eastern side then in north side we have a river called uh, langi river okay so barak river is the largest river of manipur it originates from manipur hills and it has many tributaries some of the tributaries are irang makku and tuivai mm. if you look at the natural vegetation okay um, natural vegetation occupies around 64% of the total area okay that means it's a very important biome you can say in in manipur uh, some of them are tall grasses some reeds are there but many uh, people believe that bamboo is the most important Uh, component of manipur they have in fact um, eating dishes recipes made up of bamboo then imagine bamboo is used for daily day activity they use for everything uh, bamboos are used even the construction of houses okay now come to the real problem meetis who are the original people of manipur they constitute majority approximately 53% of the total population okay but the problem is they are they are in the valley i told you already the central part of um, manipur and that is only just 10% okay now the problem current problem which is happening in manipur is the high court of manipur okay as well as the government of uh, manipur is going to award uh, scheduled tribe status to the metis st status to the metis according to which they will be able to buy land in the uh, hilly area which is occupied by the other tribes like like kukis chin and mizo okay now this is a controversy the kukis don't want metis to come to the hilly area or buy the land in the hilly areas okay that is why the rights are happening you can see metis are contributing uh, 53% to the population but they are living in only just 10% of the total area okay in 1901 uh, metis recorded a mainly main ethnic city of the manipur we also have nagas and kukis or the other major uh, communities in the manipur you can say if you look at the polity of the manipur it is unicameral that means only one house is there there are 60 members elected directly by the people and we have reservation for scheduled tribes and scheduled caste there is a two member representing the lok sabha from manipur and there is two one member from manipur representation in the rajya sabha so they have members in rajya sabha they have members in lok sabha and only two members are coming from uh, manipur in the lok sabha now this is very important expected question is this one uh, we have a unique floating national park in manipur okay there is a lake called loktak lake so loktak is located in the center of the uh, center part of Ma- manipur and all the rivers are draining into this lake this lake has lot of uh, you can see these are known as pumdis locally they are known by name pumdis the pumdis is nothing but a floating weed grasses in which deer is a natural habitat thereby this acts as a floating national park probably the only no floating national park in the world okay this kaibul lamjao is the national park name and it is located in the loktak lake kaibul lamjao national park okay world's only floating national park okay and there are efforts being made to bring this under unesco's world heritage list 
then kangla i told you already it is a uh, official uh, kingdom's uh, palace now it is a, a museum okay and uh, it is a historic seat of administration of meeti rulers okay and uh, we have manipur manipuri dance one of the eight classical dance we have and uh, manipuri is one among the eight classical dance okay uh, you can see some images okay then manipur is also famous for martial art the name of the martial art which is found in manipur is known as tangtha tangtha then pena pena is a musical instrument uh, you can say ancient musical instrument of manipur you can see this is how it is a kind of uh, violin you can say okay and is very popular among the meeti uh, people now today modern day polo british uh, particularly the western europe they play but the origin of this has come from uh, sangol kenji okay that is what uh, originally played in fact in 1859 okay the british saw some of the manipur are uh, manipurians are playing rule based polo okay which is known as sang shagol kenji that means horse and a stick now this version was adopted in the europe as a modern day uh, polo if you look at festival manipur is having lot of festivals some of the festivals we'll discuss in this class itself okay uh, you can say ningol chakaba is there shuri li is there uh, yashong is there uh, gan nagai okay chumpa cheroba okay kang and hegru hengodo hengdoba <laughs> okay ningol chakka bai you can actually adapt it's a kind of um, kind of uh, raki festival in this festival what they will do they will invite the uh, daughters that means daughter who has married and got to their in-laws home they will be invited to uh, the home and they will be giving a very grand fest okay after the fest it is expected and normally it does the um, the daughter will bless the parents and the brothers for good health and good prosperity okay and obviously in most of the indian culture this is there okay you have to make your daughters happy and you will be uh, happy look at this this is known as ningol chakka bai family bonding uh, festival okay married women she is known as ningol okay she is invited invited means chakko bai okay and uh, for a dinner or for a lunch okay fest i told you no okay so it is in the parental house so from the in-laws she is invited in the parent house okay and they are expecting or they are actually asking for blessings from the daughter that is known as ningol chakabo okay then we have kut festivals which is basically a harvest festival okay normally it happens in the month of november okay and uh, it is not just uh, basically uh, it is a cookies festival but most of the um, tribes celebrate it it's almost a pan uh, manipuri festival you can say okay then yashong okay it's considered to be the biggest festival in uh, manipur then you got uh, kudao pavi okay kudao pavi is again a harvest festival okay uh, it is mainly from the people of uh, tedim so this is about the manipur as a summary we should know the history it, it was under the kingdom okay british had a subsidiary alliance we had a problem with the myanmar then uh, british then they had their own kingdom but later they had an instrument of ins uh, accession to the indian king india and they become a part of india geography it is surrounded by the hills in central part you got a uh, this one uh, valley that is a plain area that is just 10 percent 90 percent is a hilly area polity it is a unicameral two people are coming from manipur to lok sabha and one uh, member is from uh, manipur to rajya sabha then tribal the majority of the tribal is meeti tribe they contribute 53 percent of the total population but they are living in just 10 percent of the land area that is what the problem of current controversy okay then ecology loktak lake can be questioned freshwater lake it is a having a floating national park keibul lamjao then festival ningol chakaba is a very important festival family bonding festival then origin of polo is also attributed to the manipur see you in the next video thank you very much bye bye